Let me know. Okay, hi. <laughs> hey. Hi, this is Kathy Bartoli from the In Theater. <laughs> can you talk? I'm laughing. We weren't laughing before the start. Are you no. the Kathy Bartoli from the Intimacy Dojo? Or the Kathy Bartoli from the Intimacy Dojo. Oh, I've com. heard about Dot them. <laughs> <laughs> and we're here today with Dixie De La Tour from Body Storytelling and some of her fabulous storytellers. I encourage you to check out the site. And if you're in an area where they're t- telling the story, go check it out because it was amazing for me. I got to hear people telling honest, authentic stories. They were really vulnerable and they were so hysterically funny. And it gets, it helps you see that things aren't scary. You're not alone with your stories in your head. Your experience, like, oh my God, in college I did this and I was the only one that ever felt that way. Mm-hmm. So, would you guys like to share a little bit about Bonnie? Well, I think part of the reason it started for me as I realized there's all these different communities. We don't talk to each other Mm -hmm. and we all have the same story. I mean, the details are different, but the reason we got, how we got there, we all just were pulled towards something and, you know, the adventure, you know, and often it's, it's not always a successful adventure, but you learn about yourself. You know, there's a moment of transformation where you go, ah, I'm going to walk away with that tidbit, aren't I? Now I know that about myself. What would you guys say about body? I feel like we're in some sort of Bing Crosby family reunion <laughs> video. <laughs> where I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the, at the computer to see you guys, and I'm like, I'm realizing that the people who are watching are probably like, why is Reed staring at us? <laughs> <laughs> but it's easier than me being like, hi. Ah. <laughs> um, what was the question? Why do you like well, I have an answer that I'd like to yeah. jump in with. It's that body is like the revival tent of alt sex. Like, you go there, you, you might be uninspired, you might think you're alone, and you go there and you hear something from a different community of alternative sexuality that maybe you're part of and you're cheering for all the obscure references, or maybe you're left out but you're loving that people have, you know, code that you don't know yet. And you leave inspired and you talk to people at the show before or, or, and after. Or you hear things people that are into that you, you're you into that you'd never heard anyone talk about in public before. Because yeah. I think the other thing with, with people who are kind of looking for their sexuality or the things that turn them on on the internet is you actually never hear anybody in 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 a real live space mm-hmm. talk about something that you're interested in or something that you've been curious about so the internet while you can find your you can realize that you're not alone isn't the same as having somebody tell a story especially a humorous one mm-hmm. um, in a live event and I think that that in the internet while you can feel like there are people that are your species you never get to meet them, so not meeting them in person creates this weird effect sometimes, too. And plus, even if it's not, like, a particular thing that, like, you wanted to hear somebody talk about, I found that it was really nice to just hear people humanize the experience of sex. Because mm-hmm. sometimes it's really easy for me to get caught up in my head, like, hearing people talk about porn or their scene or their website or their group, and it's like, sex is so glamorous and perfect for everyone except for me. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow I managed <laughs> to, like, make it make it seem okay that like I had that really funny thing that was super embarrassing because somebody else had something equivalent that was like oh my god we're all in this together like yeah. Yeah. so relieving yeah. but it's also not just funny a lot of it is funny and most of the stories do have humor in them but there's also that point where a lot of people share very intimate things about themselves yeah. that aren't very funny at times and so you relate to that you know you have that personal experience with it as well there are times I go to body and I laugh hysterically and then there are times where you stop and you're like yeah that happened to me or that I know that that happened so in that respect it's also it's very nice to go somewhere where you can hear things like that it's not group therapy you can just sit there and have someone talk about themselves yeah it's not therapy but it can be therapy right it's witnessing it's witnessing and mirroring it's getting to see yourself in a real person who's five feet away from you instead of an internet world away I think it's, and some people I have heard refer to it as their church, which is pretty intense, but at the same time, like for a lot of people, that kind of healing, that kind of soothing, it only happens in spaces where you're allowed to laugh and you're allowed to cry and you're allowed to feel really comfortable amongst other people. Right. That would make you our, our church leader. Yes. <gasps> We're worshiping at the Yay. temple of Dixie. <laughs> Can I be like an evangelist, a southern evangelist? You would be an amazing evangelist. For sex. I would join, I would join that church. <laughs> Much better eye makeup than Tampa. <laughs> Better rack. Yeah. <laughs> so if you'd like to see some of their shows, they do have some on YouTube. Just search for Body Storytelling. They're amazing, wonderful stories. And it's B-A-W-D-Y. Bodystorytelling.com. Like Great. Mae West Body. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.